Hey guys, we have a great podcast for you here today. Always a great podcast. We're going to be talking about how our trolls can lead to become, wait, what was it? How our trolls can become our How our trolls our can become a teachers. Yeah, like folks, we have a God that only allows evil to happen knowing a greater good can come from it. And if we approach uh, those people that we consider our trolls, our critics uh, online or wherever they are in our lives with that mindset, our trolls can really be some great teachers for us. We're going to share how they, uh, some of our trolls have been teachers for us here at Metanoia Catholic and invite you to, to discern five steps that we offer to really glean as much insight and growth from your trolls as possible. We'll see you in there. Hello, welcome, welcome back. back to the Catholic Coaching Podcast. My name is Matt. And I'm Aaron. We are the founders of Metanoia Catholic and the Catholic Coaching Podcast, where we want to make coaching very practical and Catholic. <laughs> I know you're looking at me like I know. I'm just to saying myself, they already have the opener. They don't need me to tell them all that <laughs> stuff. Uh, but, anyways, okay. And if you want to be a critic of the way I just opened this podcast, um, this would be a great podcast be a for you. Yeah, this would be a great <laughs> podcast for you because we're talking about trolls here. This whole internet phenomenon of this keyboard courage of, you mm -hmm. know, people putting themselves out there on social media. And then when you do that, there's some vulnerability there because it's out there and people can chat. They have this fun little chat function underneath your yes. YouTube videos or your posts and people can say whatever they want. I, I liken Facebook ads as like putting yourself out there and then just uh, everybody has their own little can of spray paint that they can just graffiti whatever they want yeah. right so like virtual catholic conference we put ads out there a lot of the time and boy oh boy are there some a lot of people hostile towards the catholic church that just <laughs> graffiti yeah. all over the place and oh. uh at first i i really you know i i wanted to engage i want to have like a dialogue but there's something that i learned very quickly um, and this is kind of the nature of a troll. The, the troll is not willing to enter into dialogue, right? They just want to be heard. Their opinion is what it is. They don't want a discussion. Mm. And that's what makes it so frustrating is their stuff is out there. Um, but at the same time here, uh, we've just been talking a lot about boundaries this mm -hmm. month. So this is a little bit of a nuanced expression or a nuanced uh, teaching of our boundaries that we're going mm -hmm. through in a boundaries course we're going through in the academy. But also um, like... There was a realization, too, at some point for you and I, that these trolls sometimes can teach us something. Like, God is allowing them for a reason. 100%. Yeah. I actually like calling this more of an action verb. So, it's a person who's doing this, mm -hmm. and they are trolling. Got it. Right? So, they're choosing to do this action. It puts a little bit of space between, like, they're not this monster, Right, that we always want to kind of call, call them. That we're victimized by. Right, but it's more like this person is choosing to troll. Mm -hmm. Now, naturally, my brain will go, well, why? You know, and it kind of opens up a little bit more compassion versus Ugh. I'm a victim, mm -hmm. right? And so it, it's, a, it's a little bit more of an empowering way of, of stating this. Um, I remember one of my teachers... Um, it's a body language expert, Chase Hughes. Uh, he talks about how people are broken first. All people are broken. And we agree with that. In need of a redeemer. Mm -hmm. All people are facts, meaning we can't change them. They are facts that we can't change. change we can't change facts. Like, like that. Uh, we can't change unchangeable facts. Mm -hmm. We can't change people. They're outside of our locus of control. And people are reasons, meaning they have a reason for why they act the way that they act. Mm -hmm. We don't always have to agree with those reasons. Mm -hmm. A lot of times we're like, I wouldn't act that way. Mm -hmm. And I really wish you wouldn't. And I wish you wouldn't. And I wish you weren't so terrible <laughs> to people, <laughs> you know, but there is a reason. And so, and it's probably at, you're operating out of this brokenness. Yes. Guessing. Yeah. No, it's a great, great piece to bring up. But the reason why we want to have this podcast is because these, these trolls, like a lot of the time it's the threat of trolls, the threat of putting, of putting that yourself out there being vulnerable and, and being 
kind of uh, your your ideas being attacked or something like that, mm-hmm. that that keeps us quiet and keeps us from mm. sharing something that the Lord has laid in our heart, keeps us from really being authentic. And that never bodes well for the church when we become a church that hides. And so what we want to do to kind of help you get over perhaps your troll drama or your troll fear is to offer you some steps here. We've got five steps that we're going to give you today on how to process your experience when the trolls come, right? And really glean all the value that you can get out of them. Because I remember somebody once telling me just like, just go ahead, hide the post, move on with your life. Now that may be a good tactic. But again, I fall back on this premise that God only allows evil to to befall us if he knows a greater good can come forth from it. Mm. And so rather when I experience the evil of a troll, right, what I like to do, okay, God is allowing this for a reason. What might it be? And we're going to go into some of those reasons here at the beginning here. Um, because you may be of the belief that there's no good that can come from trolls and just hide the post, and that's what you do. Now, that's Mm -hmm. one of our steps here at some point, but if that's all we do, we miss... The opportunity for We miss the opportunity that God... We miss Mm -hmm. asking the question, God, why why might you be allowing this for my growth, my betterment, right? And suddenly now, when we can look at it that way, these trolls come, or these people that are trolling come along... And it's not so scary anymore because it's like, ha ha. Mm -hmm. Only reason why God's allowing this is because he wants me to grow in some way. And man, that's Mm -hmm. a good thing. Yeah. It's always a good thing. So let's jump into, let's jump into that conversation first. Um, What might the benefits of the troll be? We'll go into this and then we'll, we'll talk about our five steps for Mm -hmm. processing your experience uh, with trolls. Okay. Well, do we, are are we going to share our own experience? Well, I, I think, yeah, this is like part of it. Let's so like it. the first the first thing that I like to share, like where, what are the benefits of the troll? Um, the troll actually may be right. So whatever they're criticizing, <laughs> there actually may be glimmers of truth yeah. or 100% truth yeah. that's there. Um, and so it's like, that's one of the first questions I actually like to ask. It's like, where might this person be, be right. right? Yes, yes. Okay. Yep. I remember the first time Aaron somebody really kind of kind of trolled us. When we were like a baby company. Really in the beginning. And I remember you making this comment or like what is this person just like going around like just a- attacking finding like- the least influential <laughs> Catholics you can <laughs> that are out there in the world and be like, I'm going to go after them. And it's just yeah. like, ooh, what's... We just didn't really understand their strategy, but still, it was just, it, it was interesting. Something happened. Triggered. And um, I remember having a very hard time, like, with it. It was probably, like, a month. Well, uh, he, I remember journaling on it he, for a month. But, Aaron, he literally took, Continued. like, some videos that we had put on YouTube and cut them up and... <laughs> And made videos with our videos commenting in between stuff that we were saying yeah, and yeah. really making some assaults on, on our character they, and they, our intentions. He, and He trumped us. Yeah. Yeah. He like did what it. people do to Donald Trump. You yeah. Know? Yeah. <laughs> Again, like that's a thought. But like it was. Like, there was l- some editorializing going on there, though. I, that's that's a thought. And I have a lot of a lot of evidence to back that up. Yeah. Yes. But I mean. How funny that we can like laugh at this. This is how I know that mm-hmm. there's like true freedom. Not laugh at that person, but laugh at like really because uh, guys, it really like uh, it destroyed hurt. me for like a month. And and I remember you cry like crying. Crying. In I was bed sick over it. in bed. No, I was already sick, so yeah. I'm like already kind of a baby when I'm sick. And then like I was just like <laughs> you know just very felt very like yeah like. Hurt, misunderstood. Like, yep, yeah. misunderstood. All the things. A lot of journal work. Mm-hmm. And we, I know we always talk about the journal, but man, this is these are the times when the journal really came in handy because I would have held on to that for the mm-hmm. rest of my life, that grudge, if I didn't like intentionally say, I, I do not want this to bother me anymore. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, um, so that was my goal for the month. Like, let's get over this. And I remember it was well into a couple weeks in and doing my makeup one day and I just felt like the Lord was like, what if this person was your coach? Mm-hmm. And I was like, Oh Lord, what? <laughs> Excuse me. What? Um, but he was like, no, like what if this person was your greatest teacher? What could you learn from this? Mm-hmm. And at that point, 
I, di- I wasn't ready to jump into that at that point. I needed to process a lot of things, a lot of thoughts, a lot of emotions. I needed to make space for that sadness and all of that, mm-hmm. the stuff that came up. But at that point, I was ready to listen to that prompt and go, yeah, what if they were? What if, what if this person was my greatest teacher mm-hmm. right now? Yeah. What could I learn? Yeah. So. And when we started going down that route, some of the critiques were specifically like attacks on like legitimacy. Right. Mm-hmm. And so like in what authority are, are we are we sitting here and having this podcast and sharing this? So it's like, OK, it's one of authority and even like mm-hmm. church authority. And do we have license to be able to having to have these conversations? The other one was was, hey, you guys are are crossing the boundaries with uh, clinical psychology and you've got no business talking about these things. And so those were kind of like two areas where it was like, okay, we don't want to be out of integrity with our faith or out of integrity with, with, you know, and it's out of our own authority. Right. Um, and we want to be operating above board always. And we certainly don't want to be, uh, like practicing counseling without a license, that kind of thing. So, Mm -hmm. but like it's, it helped us to, to dive into these things a little bit more. So it's like, okay, mm-hmm. this person's saying that we're definitely doing it. Let's see if we are doing it. Like if, if this person's right, we don't want to be doing this. And so one of the first things we did mm-hmm. was actually contacted our bishop. And that was a really helpful conversation. He was a, uh, a, a, a canon lawyer. We had a good relationship mm-hmm. with him. And he even brought in like his own canon lawyer to kind of mm-hmm. weigh in on some of these questions that we had. And at the end of it, like the bishop was like, hey, just put on your website that like, you, you're operating under, you know, the the uh, permission of your local ordinary. And it's like, wow, that's great. So, like, here we are. We're kind of we're we're in line and we're we're uh, operating in integrity now, and a we, little bit more integrity than we were. Yeah. Another and be, because we were willing to go to that place of being like, yeah, maybe this person is right. Like, let's look into these things mm-hmm. and not be defensive about it. And like I said, this was an immediate. This was like probably a couple weeks later. Yeah. Um, but we could bring it up with our, with our Bishop and right. We, we got this, this approval from him, but also really great advice, like a great, like law. I remember (laughs) one. Yeah. I remember one of the things where this, this uh, this guy was, was, uh, uh, critiquing saying that like, you're saying the Holy spirit is speaking to you and like putting these things on, on your heart and everything like that. And that's how, why you're acting. And so you're, you're, it's, you're, you're legitimizing a private revelation. Now it's just kind of like, well, that seems like a bit of a stretch, right? It's kind of like a, a colloquialism that you hear. It's like the Holy Spirit just laid this on my heart, right? Mm-hmm. But it also, like when we brought that up to our bishop, he was just like, you kind of got to check that. Mm-hmm. Because like, you know, the Holy, like even even the, Satan can show up as, a, as an angel of light, right? Mm-hmm. And there's there's an element of prudence. When you say this, you're kind of giving this divine legitimacy to what you're saying. And, uh, and, and like, you just got to be cautious about that. And so maybe you can be, say something like, hey, I, I do feel that the Holy Spirit is laying this on my heart mm-hmm. to say, right? But it's for you to I've take. Been dis- and, I've been yeah. discerning this. Like, you guys discern for yourselves. But like, this is kind of where this is, we've been discerning. That's something with my authority to say. Mm-hmm. But I can't say de facto this is what the Holy Spirit said, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, at least in a way that 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 is it influences the way that you act and and how you are follow your conscience. Right. So that was something that was like a great learning moment. Was one hundred percent, yeah. Check our language Just, a little. Yeah, bit. and refine our language. And, yeah. And to yeah, to kind of get our thoughts out in a more concise fashion, and mm-hmm. and always giving people the free will to choose yeah. for themselves. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the other area was like, um, he made fun of our lighting quite a bit. And, uh, but he wasn't, he was, wasn't it was wrong. actually pretty, pretty, I looked like uncle Fester in yeah. a couple of those. It was pretty, we pretty bad. Creepy. They're like, mm, maybe we are just gonna open a window, open, <laughs> open, open some shades. Here yep. So we don't look, so we don't look like real trolls. Not wrong. Okay. All right, so that's the first thing. It might be, uh, it might have some opportunity for growth there, okay? Mm -hmm. The other thing, the troll may be uncovering some attachment that God wants to deal with. Public image, your reputation. Some vanity that's Mm -hmm. there. I know that was something that really stung, right? Yeah, being right. Yeah. Like, 
Like, what if, you know, like, what if, what if somebody's like questioning me being right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So that was, that was just kind of a big thing here for, for us as well. It was mm-hmm. just like, oh man, like we need to have this perfect image and, mm-hmm. and, mm-hmm. uh, the Lord's just kind of like, yeah, let's, let's deal with this. Let's check this. So that was something that was, that was important. So where might that troll be uncovering some attachment that God wants to deal mm-hmm. with? Um, number three. Control could be revealing where your mind is and where it is not focused. Yeah. Kind of goes hand in hand with the number two there, where your attachments are. And your intention. Yeah. 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 So it's like, am I doing this because ultimately I want there to be a focus that's mm-hmm. on me? Or is there a mission focus? Is there... Are, are we lacking charity in this? Are we lacking the infused virtues? And when I say lacking the infused virtues behind what we do, the infused mm-hmm. virtues allow us to act in a... T- towards the intention of glorifying God alone, right? Natural virtues, the acquired virtues, are, are things that yeah, they we, there's some there's some benefit, some mm-hmm. natural benefit to living, you know, to, to operating that way. But we're meant to to act to glorify God alone. We learn this from Saint Ignatius, right, and his mm-hmm. his discernment steps. So it's like, is the focus on me? Or is the focus on really helping other people? And in that mo- those couple of days or weeks where we were kind of mulling over this, a lot of that focus I realized was on myself and it was revealing some attachments too yeah, that I was no, trying to guard. For me, it was kind of, um, it helped me, it helped me really like discern because the topic, one of the topics that this person like trolled us on. And I, I mean, I don't know if this is something that they were going through themselves or whatever, but um, it was about forgiveness mm-hmm. and it was, it was me speaking about it and it was me speaking about my own experience and it was very vulnerable experience mm-hmm. on forgiveness. And right around that time of receiving these critiques, um, I was coaching people in this topic and there was a lot of fruit happening. Mm-hmm. And so it helps me say, well, you know, like what particular area and also like, is this mission oriented? Yeah. Like I, I'm not leading the charge when it comes to this forgiveness thing. This thing, this keeps coming up Mm -hmm. in coaching calls and it's, and it is providing really good fruit. And so Mm -hmm. it really helped me. I'm not saying like my reputation wasn't wounded. It sure was. Mm -hmm. And there was a lot of pride and vanity behind that, but it helped me take a step back and go, well, what areas were they bringing up? Where might be, they be right? And where might they be wrong? Which we'll get into a little bit. Yeah. Later. And I loved how you said, like, this was the, this person assaulted kind of this idea of, of, of forgiveness. And even specifically, it was like having to forgive God, right? Mm. Now, this doesn't imply that God does anything wrong, but it does imply that we can hold anger towards God or mm-hmm. a grudge, and that needs to be released, right? Because that's so, what unforgiveness is, is holding on to anger right, right. towards a person. And so you're yeah. working people through this process, giving them permission to be angry at God, so they may release, acknowledge it, and r- repent of it, and release it, uh, mm-hmm. this anger. And the fruits of it were, were really important. So I imagine at the Freedom. end of this, you were like, no, this person is like, they're critiquing here, but no, I've done my work. I'm, I'm looking for the evidence as to where they might be wrong, but there's a lot of fruits that now I'm seeing that I wasn't really considering before where this path that we're going down is actually really ordained. Like there's, there's, well, there's good fruits that are here and you know, the, you know, the tree by its fruits. Yeah, and it helped me grow in conviction exactly, of that even right. more. Which is really our number four here. Yeah. So like the gift that, that trolls can be is they can help us to really grow in firm conviction mm-hmm. of what the Lord is doing in our in our lives or you know mm-hmm. what our what our personal mission is at this point. Amen. Mm-hmm. So where are we at? Yeah. Well, I mean, this? that's really part one. That's kind of the discussion. Okay, so cool. one, they could be right. Two, uncovering an attachment. Mm-hmm. Three, revealing where your focus is. And four, maybe an opportunity that the Lord's put in front of you to grow in your conviction. I love this quote that right. you put by St. Padre Pio, one of my favorites. To be tempted is a sign that the soul is pleasing to the Lord. Yeah. To be tempted to want to punch somebody in the face <laughs> is a sign that someone is pleasing to the Lord. I'm just yeah, kidding. I don't know about that. Do not quote me on that. But anyways, okay. So let's jump into these five steps. And the, before we get into this, I want to just lay... A, a premise uh, and defines, make some definitions here as well of what we're talking about. Okay, so uh, first thing is, is the, the first premise is that God only allows 
something to happen, knowing great or good can come from it, an evil to happen. Okay. So when we have that mindset going into this again, that helps us to have this growth mindset approach mm -hmm. to the uncomfortable situation uh, of, of somebody critiquing you publicly, that troll. Okay? Growth minded, but also the hero minded. So right. like we have like the hero, the guide, the victim journey, right? Like versus yeah. staying in the victim place. It's like, okay, what would a hero do here? What, yeah. what would somebody who wants to grow from this? Yeah, you're on? only making me stronger. Okay. Uh, number number two is know the limitations of communication on social media, mm -hmm. right? And a so, person is not standing in front of you. Yeah. Like, so there's, there's like, as far as like the communication back and forth, but also like the, what the way that we can read a comment mm -hmm. online may reflect more on us than actually on the other person. Yep. Okay. So that's, again, we're, we're kind of doing our own work here and, and we offer that up front to say, do your own work first to see if there really is kind of a trolling situation or if you're the person that's beating yourself up, right. Mm -hmm. With your own interpretation. Um, and then the third thing is really like defining our terms when we're talking about a troll here. And again, I, I, or a person who's trolling, trolling is when somebody is criticizing you, but they have no desire to really grow themselves or enter into a dialogue. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if you want to discern whether or not you're dealing with a, you know, somebody constructively criticizing, which means that their intention is to help you grow versus somebody that is just mm -hmm. trolling you and their intention is to uh, like kind of tear you down mm -hmm. is ask them a question, maybe even engage them with a question on social media and see if they respond in an actual dialogue, right? But if they respond with not answering your question, but mm -hmm. just more argument, that's usually where it's just like, okay, I, I see you've, you've revealed they're looking you are for a at fight. This point. Yeah. And this actually happened like with this, yep. with this situation, I reached out, we started emailing back and forth. And, uh, and that was like, when I realized that I, I was responding to this person's questions, uh, but he was not responding to mine. I was like, okay, there's, there's, not, no there's not an authentic desire for dialogue here. And, yeah. and so I, I can't, that's his locus of control. I, I got to, you know, at that point, it was just like, this is, mm -hmm. there, we, we can't move forward here. Okay. Mm -hmm. So step one with this. All right. So say in a situation, you, 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 you identify that you're dealing with a troll. Um, we always want to invite people to be students of their own Interior. internal experience okay so step one is answering this question what is this stirring up mm -hmm. in you okay if you're feeling exposed name it what is it exposing right um if you're feeling ashamed mm -hmm. name it like what's what's been revealed that you don't want other people to see or you think is being re revealed that you don't want uh, others to see also notice your reaction maybe you can't go right to the thought or the emotion you might you might be able to identify the emotion for me it was this victimhood mm -hmm. it, it i wouldn't even say that's an emotion it's more it was more of a habit mm -hmm. of action of like <laughs> like poor me or whatever like i'm not like making fun of myself i'm like but like that was something and we always watch this show on YouTube, it's called the behavioral panel and these guys who read behavioral, you know, uh, they're behavioral analysts mm -hmm. and they always say, um, the way people react has gotten them out of things before in the past. Mm -hmm. Right. So like the organism does what the organism is, has, has learned, has learned yeah, to help its survival. Yes. yes. Um, and so for me, it was like, it kind of identified this pattern of victimhood it was hard to like bring that out but like when it came out it was like big wait you know? victimhood in you yes okay yeah of being like why me like what you know because it wasn't even like he was he was um he was attacking both of us it was me yeah there, there was, was like there a was focus on focus on the woman yes which was kind of like all right, you're showing your real colors here, dude. But yeah. also it was like that brought something out in me and I could really bring that to the Lord and be like, whoa, okay. So mm -hmm. this is like my pattern of response. Yeah, and that pattern of response was like, okay, kind of go into this victim mode, talk to people about it yep. and like say uh, like, and so we can solicit some sort of comfort. Oh no, pat on the head. Like this is, this is not true mm -hmm. and, and, and things like that, which, which again, when we go into that, we're, we're missing out on all the possible good teaching moments 
that our trolls all. But I will say there were us. teaching moments within it. Okay. Because I was aware I was doing that, mm-hmm. and I didn't want to be responding in that way. But I was also kind of leaving room for it. I was like, okay, this is how I'm responding. So there was self reflection going on, um, but it I kind of didn't want to stay in that place. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and I didn't want to stay in unforgiveness, believe it or not. It took me a while to get to there too, but it was like, no, I want to forgive because the irony of the whole thing was <laughs> he was like making a comment about me forgiving God and forgiving others. And like now here I am holding on to unforgiveness. Mm-hmm. I was like, this is like irony at its greatest. Um, but it was it was kind of like, okay, challenge accepted. Like let's forgive this person mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. new goal yeah i mean and where it went for 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 me was like okay um i don't want i don't want to be, re, be uh accused of of you know this doing counseling or, or like i'm i'm with without you know the proper uh uh, uh credentials to do something mm-hmm. like that which is not an okay thing to do and we do not do that but like it it i didn't really know how to respond to those questions like we do now and draw those distinctions mm-hmm. and so what it did for me is like the thought that came to mind is like maybe we shouldn't be doing this mm. and it was like that was like ooh, a gut punch so like i could be doing something really wrong or really like harmful here mm-hmm. and that was what i was making some of the comments mean but really when we held that up to the light of reason we started to look at what we like literally what we were doing and the distinctions that we were making like that actually that criticism kind of drove me to conviction um, kind of conviction to really explore okay let's start to define this boundary between counseling and and coaching and and psychology like clinical psychology and that modality and then what's going on in coaching because there are distinctions here let's let's be real explicit about those things if we can't be explicit then we're going to muddy these boundaries and and we could risk actually operating outside of where we really ought to be Mm -hmm. okay so the second thing is where might they be right okay (laughs) We talked about this in forgiving, like how to forgive somebody when when you're right. Or mm-hmm. was that the name of the podcast? It was something like, how to wh- forgive somebody when you know they're wrong. <laughs> when you know they're wrong, yeah. But this is a great question: Where might they be right? And notice even your own internal resistance to that question. Mm-hmm. So, like, if you're like, "No, they're absolutely wrong," every but like, notice your response to that. Like, that's mm-hmm. that's a defensive response. Um. What if you could freely say, yeah, they might be right over here and I'm willing to look at that. Mm -hmm. And they they are wrong about this, which is actually the step after this. Mm -hmm. But it's it it does kind of it helps you just become way more objective and less emotional and reactive to this. Mm -hmm. So it's just like, okay, so if I were to look at this like I'm looking through a magnifying glass and be like, okay, so this is right and this is wrong and it just helps you grow in conviction even more. Yeah, and it's applying that principle of St. Thomas Aquinas of seldom seldom deny, rarely affirm, always distinguish. Yeah. Right? And so it's like you get the critique from the troll or the whatever it is, don't just be so quick to just deny it, mm-hmm. right? Or block them or, or, or block whatever. Yeah, yeah, or just right be away. like there's uh, or, or 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 just quick to be like oh they're they're just so right because that's kind of where i tend to go that's like more Mm. indicative of my anxious attachment style where i just presume the other person's right Uh, but i also recognize that in my melancholic that i I tend to take information in and then after i've had an opportunity to think about it and the Mm -hmm. distinctions where they're right where they're wrong that's like i i can respond a little bit better so i've started to create space for myself yeah so how i react how did you respond then you said that you kind of you've um, that's what you thought. You're like, what, what if they're well, right? The, yeah. My, what, what if they're, I don't understand what you're asking. What if they're all right? A hundred percent right. What if they're a hundred right? Yeah. Then like, I shouldn't be doing what I'm doing. Uh huh. That's kind of like where it went. And it was like, Ooh, now that is like, there's a fear there of like, I'm hurting somebody. Mm. Like I am, I am out of integrity. That's like with this. Mm-hmm. But again, that's why Good counsel is a is certainly a, you know can can kind of fit into this step and we saw it out we had the mm-hmm. conversation with our bishop and pulling in the canon lawyers there and that was just, praise God for just the open openness there and uh, but like where might they be right and again we said our lighting was terrible folks that was like one thing 
Yeah. I looked like Uncle Fester. It was really bad. And uh, but it really uh, one of the fruits is it, is it caused us to down go down that path of really having those good distinctions between counseling, and and, mm-hmm. and coaching, because if we are if we aren't doing that, then arguably yeah, yeah. it's it's not a, it's not a good thing. We're 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 not really representing what we do and what we can promise to our clients. And, and here's the interesting well. thing: there have been like a number of other insults on this level, right? About this distinction between coaching and sure. counseling. Yeah. And now we're like equipped to respond. Yeah, it's like, no, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because distinctions need to be made mm-hmm. because like, let's be honest, there is this uptick in coaches right now. Mm-hmm. And so so we need to be able to make this distinction. Um, and there are a lot of counselors yes. that are now opening up coaching practices as well. Right. And they, I mean, they have a legal they, reason that they to make some 100% distinctions. They 100% need to make distinctions. Yeah. And we actually have trained some of these counselors who wanted to grow in their coaching skills. Mm-hmm. So like they've asked us for these distinctions. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So the Lord was equipping us to actually engage in dialogue with this. Yeah. And we, we were a whole lot smarter mm-hmm. uh, because of it. Okay. Uh, step three, where are they definitely wrong? All right. So, so there's such freedom in this too. Yeah. To say like, yeah, no, like you were saying, like your, your, your habitual response would be like, yeah, they're right. And I'm doing something wrong. Mm-hmm. And I think we can all relate to that. I know I can relate to that too, but like, where could we say like, no, you're 100% wrong here. You know, like there's no way you can know what my intention is here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. And, and that was that was one of the. Yeah. The accusation. The, the accusation was was assuming what my intention was. I was like, well, I mean, unless if you're a mind reader, which you're obviously even if you think you are, you're not a good one because mm-hmm. that wasn't my intention. And to be able to kind of claim that as well and say like, no, I don't need to sit in this unnecessary shame. I can apologize for this and I can change this over here mm-hmm. and I'm happy to do that. But like where I'm at, like you, you didn't know what my intention mm-hmm. was. My intention was to share my story. So that's, yeah. Yeah, exactly. I see this coming up quite a bit with when it, whenever money, exchange of mm. money is involved here. Because uh, yeah. all of a sudden money in exchange for something, uh, there needs to be a really clear value proposition for that to make sense. And uh, if there's ever any sort of confusion, that's where people can really start to... Uh, uh, they, they amplify. If you're giving something away for free, they're just kind of like, oh, okay. But as soon as you say, I'm going to charge money for this, suddenly now it's like, okay, you're a charlatan. You are hoodwinking people. You mm-hmm. are, um, you know, you're, you're, I don't know, you're, you're what is syncretism or whatever. Like you're, yeah. you're selling the gospel and things like that. By, yeah. uh, Which is, I always thought would be really interesting for, remember how people would go around and sell Bibles? Yeah. 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 Like, you are literally selling the gospel. <laughs> I wonder if those people had a hard time sleeping at night. You know uh, what I mean? Uh, like if they heard that anyway, sorry, I, I went off. But yeah, it, but nonetheless, it like, I find that when, when you're getting in areas of, of money, sometimes that's where, or there's, there's some sort of exchange that's taking place transaction. Mm. Then that's where, that's where the kind of the, the critiques can come out, especially, yeah. especially in the Catholic world. There's some sensitivity there. Well, I, you know, and, and I think, you know, as a mindset coach, I, I immediately think, well, why, like, this just reveals to me something that you're going through, mm-hmm. that you're thinking about money, yeah. right? Yep. And of course, like, are we selling prayer sessions with people? No. Like, we we truly believe and we know that this is the case because we've invested in, in our own training. But, mm-hmm. like, coaching is a skill in and of itself. It mm-hmm. is a skill that you practice and you can fail a standard a standard that we actually just started mm-hmm. testing our coaches to mm-hmm. certify them yeah. and you can fail it so like there's a standard and there's it's a skill just like any other trade and it's a skill that people find valuable and mm-hmm. people want to pay money for mm-hmm. and so yeah yeah but as far as just considering also like where they might be wrong mm-hmm. i mean this is where we kind of apply some of those elements of our what we call our reason cycle that's really kind of our our our, our way. This is how we coach. We mm-hmm. coach with something, a process called the reason cycle. We teach this in our academy and we teach it certainly in our coaching programs. But the the reason cycle, one of the things that we do is we say, okay, what what's this person's argument that they're making and what's what are like 
the the universal truths? What are some of the premises uh, upon which they're making this argument? Is it really valid? Mm-hmm. Um, what is the trajectory of kind of their uh, their claim that they're making here as well? Um, mm. What is the tone of it? What's the tone of it? Like, and so you can kind of start to see like where is this argument coming from? Uh, is it fear based? Is it something mm-hmm. that is like truly loving based? If it's loving, and they're not a troll. Okay, mm-hmm. they they'll be willing to enter the dialogue because it's it's all about you know helping you remove the sp- the splinter from your eye, your eye or the beam from your eye. But um, yeah, just kind of looking at it and be like, okay, is this in this case it's it's like there was no distinction. This person wasn't able to make a distinction between um, psychology and coaching. There was no distinction. It was just you're using words that a psychologist uses, so therefore you're using psychology was kind of the argument that was there, mm-hmm. and that's just not a valid argument. Because, you know, I could have a conversation with my daughter and talk about emotions and I'm mm-hmm. not practicing psychology that's there. I'm just, just how else am I supposed to have the, the conversation? I hope parents can have conversations yeah. with the kids about their emotions. Yeah. Now, I'm not prescribing, you know. Medicine. Medicine or, or clinically diagnosing my daughter. Like mm-hmm. that's a different modality. You have to go through licensing to have something like that. So that was just kind of like how I work through it. And it's just mm-hmm. like, okay, they're, they're, this person's definitely wrong in this. Yeah. You know, presumption just based on language alone that mm-hmm. that means that you're practicing psychology it's like nah, that's that's that doesn't hold, wa- yeah. hold water yeah and and another thing too is the the very fact that they didn't have distinctions mm-hmm. so like it, it would be an illogical claim to say you've crossed this boundary if there is no boundary that you've that you've actually distinguished yes right yeah. and you have the authority to right. distinguish right yeah. so like it, it it was just an illogical like way of kind of yeah. like making a claim yeah it's like okay well tell me when that boundary is crossed by using language the same language as yeah. that that that's kind of yeah yeah so. so that was it okay so that was step four or step three where are they definitely wrong step four where's the opportunity to grow okay mm-hmm. so we've gone through we've considered like where they're right where they're wrong what's going on in our life where it might be revealing some attachment where it might be an opportunity to grow in conviction on something like where is the opportunity to grow uh, st- growth always begins with self-awareness mm-hmm. and so that's why we say step one what's the stirring up in you like growing aware of your own interior response what is that indicating in terms of the things that you love, the attachments that you have, maybe where you are putting something in a higher place than where, where God really ought to be in your life. Okay, mm-hmm. uh, where where's there, where are you lacking in an expertise or knowledge? Oh yeah, yeah, that's like or skill deficiency. Yeah, even. yeah, yeah. So not even just knowledge, but skill. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like oh yeah, you might be right about this. Yeah, mm-hmm. or even like where are you lacking in some sort of a virtue like humility? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or any sort of virtue. And and this was like, it was helpful. And it like, when I thought I was like, okay, making these accusations, we're talking to the bishop, making these accusations that were like saying that we're, you know, receiving messages from the Holy Spirit. And, and he was like, well, well, Matt, what did you say? And I was like, well, he, he said this. And he goes, well, I can see how they take that that way. And I was like, oh, man. And it was very humbling mm-hmm. to hear that. Uh, but also it was it was an education in language. So mm-hmm. it exposed a poverty of knowledge of how to communicate well without confusion. But also it, there was some humility that's there. It's like, okay, mm-hmm. yeah, I can I can hand that one over. You know, I love what what um, you know we, we've said it in the past. Uh, a lot of times I, I I think you got it from from going through life coach school. But when somebody accuses you of saying you know being impatient or arrogant, just being able to say like, yeah, yeah, you're probably right. <laughs> There are times. There are times. <laughs> yes. There are times. And then just like ad- the admitting it. Like, ah, the freedom of admitting it. The humility it. that's there. Yeah. The freedom of admitting it, I think, is it's just freedom. You drop the rope. Like, you're not going to play tug of war anymore when you go, yeah, you might be right. And like, and and I can immediately think of all of these examples of how you're right. Mm-hmm. Right? So, I think and a, I, I think, think a, that also makes the things that you do know to be true so much more substantial. Yeah. Right. Like if you're willing to say, yes, I am a human. I am impatient. I am proud. I am all of these things and make a distinction of a claim that you are making because I don't see one. So like, see what I mean? Like how it's, it does actually kind of strengthen your, what your knowledge of what you do know. Yeah. 
I think of Eminem at the end of Eight Mile. This is like the second episode this mm-hmm. month that I've cited the movie Eight Mile. Uh, but like so a, weird. A, I know, right? Because I'm like <laughs> such a not Eminem fan. But actually, I do like some of this stuff. Anyways, mm-hmm. um, but like at the very end of the movie, he's about to just get. He's like in this rap battle with this dude, and he. Instead of like with, going and with, attacking with this the rapper named Reese's Pieces, Reese's Pieces as the free world or something like was this Reese's Pieces? Is no, like, whatever. I don't, don't know. I haven't His seen the movie in a while. But he <laughs> <laughs> got it. I see. Very funny, Aaron. In the old is a dad and joke. I know. Did you keep them in a database? No. Uh, okay. But anyways, <laughs> he like the the before this guy can get up and kind of rap and make fun of him, he just gets up there and just makes fun of himself. And like says everything that you could possibly say about me, like, uh, and the guy gets up there and he's just speechless, right? Like, like that's dropping the, the robe. And yeah. there's like an act of humility in that. Now it wasn't so charitable in the way that he did it, but yeah. like, nonetheless, it's just kind of the uh, thing that comes to mind. Step five here. All right. Final step. Um, choose when it is time to hide the post or to block okay. the person. So like at this point, yeah. you've kind of, You've identified the opportunities for growth. Mm-hmm. You've you've kind of checked in to see if there's a, the potential of a dialogue. And it doesn't mean that every single person that posts you have to like engage with them. I mean, like it's it just gets exhausting at some point, uh, and you can't have all these sidebars. But like, th- there does come a point where y- you you just you say, you know what, the conditions are not here to mm-hmm. really um, for either of us to really grow any further, right? Either I've, you know, like done all I can in this, and that's usually mm-hmm. kind of it. And it's just like at that point, it just kind of goes back to this is a boundary that I'm putting in place. So you can have like I'm fine with criticism, right? But I, I wait if it's criticism where you're if it's not, constructive, it's constructive. Yeah. But if it's criticism, but there's no dialogue. Yeah. Uh, on this point, then that's not what yeah, I'm not going to let you just graffiti my Instagram yeah. channel at, at that it point. It started just... getting a, after we did like dialogue with this person, mm-hmm. it started getting like mean on, yeah. on like on the posts and it was kind of, it was very antagonistic and it was just like the style and the spirit that we did not want like on our posts. And so we, we blocked them. Just blocked them. You know, <laughs> I it. realized that you could block somebody. I was like, oh, yeah. I didn't even know that. And so it, I learned something there too. Yeah. And it doesn't mean that you're giving up on the person, mm-hmm. you know, when you, when you block them and it's just like, oh, but like I could, this is really an opportunity for me to help them. It's just like, no, like you can't, again, foundational thing. You can see the other person where they're at, but you can't do another person's work for them. Yeah. Right. Yeah, and you know what? Like, even when I think about this person, I, I really do have, like, there's a tender place in my heart because I feel like, A, we learned a lot from yeah. this experience, but also I'm like, be like for somebody to be, to act that way in an antagonistic way, it does make me think, wow, like, and get curious about them. And like, why might they be acting that way? Like, what are they thinking? What are they feeling? What's the good they're seeking? what is the good that they're seeking, but also like what is the brokenness that's that's mm-hmm. kind of creating this response in them? And um, I like, I I forgave this person. I continue to forgive them. And also like I pray for them and mm-hmm. I'm like, Lord, help them. They're seeking something. And mm-hmm. so even just for us to reflect back on this, there is no like ickiness in mm-hmm. my in myself like thinking about this time i think it was just a tremendous place to go to the gym right like to go and grow these muscles of resiliency and and also conviction but also forgiveness like to grow in the ability of forgiveness it was kind of like the point where the lord was like okay you you talk a good game too on forgiveness here you go yeah here's a great opportunity to there's, forgive somebody there's freedom so it, it was, yeah. uh, I hope this has been uh, a helpful episode for you. And maybe, maybe you're dealing with this. And I mean, maybe you're a parent who's got, uh, who's got a, a, a son or a daughter mm-hmm. that is getting bullied at school. I think these steps are appropriate there as well. Mm-hmm. And it's, and it, it starts with doing your own work, right? From a clean place and then being able to help guide, guide our kids or guide mm-hmm. those people in our care, guide them through this process. And I, I honestly, I think there's, there's such freedom in these, because the temptation is to just go the route of the victim, mm-hmm. 
and 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 go on the offensive. And folks, we can, in in so doing, we can become the trolls ourselves yeah. when we do that, right? Where we're not about entering a dialogue, we're just about causing pain at that point, which is what the the troll is doing. Mm -hmm. I remember um, quick little story about that. Even sure. talking to your kids, but we were just um, relaying this to one of our nieces the other day, and you know, it's just kids being kids little girls being little girls, not very nice, you know? Mm -hmm. And I remember uh, like having a very strong memory of being in sixth grade and having girls in my class that were not nice who would talk about me and I found out, you know, and I don't remember where I got this from. I, I'm pretty sure it was from my mom, but it was like what people do. And it's like, this is like, creating the Catholic mindset coach yeah. that I am right now. <laughs> but like, it was like what people do, it's so much more about them than it is about you. Like what people say about you, it's yeah. more, it tells, it gives you more information into their interior life. Yeah. And so like, what do you want to do with that mm -hmm. type of thing? And it, it just, it helped me kind of create that boundary and get curious about the person. It wasn't me. It didn't mean it was easy. It didn't mean I, I was, you know, excused to everyone, but I wasn't reacting. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I passed that off to her. I'm like, I don't know how you're going to respond to this, but this helped me when I was in sixth grade. So, yeah. And if you are a parent and you do have a kid uh, that is dealing with bullying and you've got your own work to do, come to the academy. Come join us in the Metanoia Catholic Academy. Yeah. And like, this is, this is not work that is easy to do by yourselves. I mean, mm -hmm. Aaron and I, we didn't just coach each other through this whole process. We actually went to other council mm -hmm. and, and got some assistance with this as well. And there certainly was a whole lot of journal work to do that was very helpful. Going Daily. to the Lord with yeah. this. And before you can, you can kind of really help your, your child to go through this, or maybe it's your, maybe it's even like your spouse mm -hmm. that's going through something like this. Uh, or maybe you're going through it yourself. The awareness piece, that's step one. What is this stirring up in me, even at the recipient of the trolling or seeing somebody I love as the on the receiving end of somebody's bullying or they're trolling? What is it stirring up in me? Um, mm -hmm. and, and then being able to identify, wow, where is there is there poverty of charity in my heart? Is there, um, you know... It, is, am I, am I failing to see the other person? Am I seeing, am, am I just calling them a troll rather than a person who is trolling? <laughs> right. Who's choosing to using, troll. Person that is choosing to <laughs> troll, unwisely choosing with, to with troll. With a reason. With their own reason that they, that they think is really good, but <laughs> they just don't know any better. Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. Like, is, is that kind of the mindset that I'm approaching this with? Or am I, am I seeing this person now as a, you know, with, <laughs> with a big fat target on them and my crosshairs and, you know, they just need to be taken out. It's not, we're not, we're not seeing the person at that point any more than that person is able to see your child or your loved one mm -hmm. or any more than they're able to see themselves at that point. And oftentimes putting yourself in that place where finally you're able to see yourself and you're able to see that other person, that is the actual antidote to the trolling that's there is, is seeing the other person. But ultimately, they must choose, right? We can choose whether or not we see mm -hmm. the other people and see them as Christ sees them. And that's a journey to get there, right? That's what we teach people. That We accompany people mm -hmm. on that journey in the Metanoia Catholic Academy. We use the journal as our tool for it. But also, um, yeah, that's, that's, that's the beginning of the journey. And, and ultimately, they get to choose at the end of the day. We get to yeah. choose if we see them, but they get to choose if they want to continue to live in that, in that uh, false reality. And we get to choose the thought... How is a good God allowing this for my greatest good? Or my child's greatest or good. Or my child's cr greatest good. And, or both of our greatest good. Like how, how, how is a good God showing up here? And just to change that perspective. Because I think if you do change that perspective, you're going to look for these areas of growth. Yeah. Some mm -hmm. people, and, and this is a thought that kind of came to mind, just knowing some family members that are kind of, you know, sometimes they're bullied or I have a, a very good friend that was bullied terribly in high school mm -hmm. uh, to the point where like he needed to leave the high school. And I look at uh, his vocation now and how much resiliency that vocation demands of him mm -hmm. and how the Lord was perhaps really building up his resiliency muscle. Some of us have his vocations. Some of us have vocations that are going to mm -hmm. demand 
resiliency more so than others. And maybe, maybe that is just a, what a good God is doing to, like, to temper us, to yeah. refine us, to be able to really deliver uh, in our personal vocation mm. when we uh, enter that age of influence. So, That's who a knows? Cool perspective. Who knows? All right, Certainly folks. did that with us. Yeah. Yeah. All right, hey, guys. Merry Christmas to you. If you're listen listen to this and release, we got a few days from Christmas. You can't see Matt's shirt, but they're tiny little Santa Claus. Tiny I little, mean, St. Nicholas. Tiny little St. Nick's yeah. on it. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. God forbid we say Santa Claus. Merry but anyways. Christmas. All right. See you guys. Hey, thanks for sticking with us in the Catholic Coaching Podcast. If you like what you heard. Please like and subscribe, and we'll see you again.